Um, hello, Lara. How are you? Hi, doing well. Thanks so much for talking to me today. This is great. Well, I, I kind of feel like I have to. You come highly recommended from a good friend of mine, Drew, from uh, from the infamous uh, Sleep With Me podcast. So he said, um, you're utterly fascinating and <laughs> we need you on our conference. Uh, it's a fascinating topic, the topic of your podcast. It's called Married to Doctors. Now, um, normally, when people are confronted with somebody who's married to a doctor, they go, lucky you, you've done well, um, you're kicking back, uh, your partner is obviously earning thousands of pounds or thousands of dollars <laughs> per day. Um, surely this is just a podcast that fundamentally glorifies the fact that um, you've done well out of life. Yeah, we sell handbags and shoes. No. <laughs> no, the whole purpose of the podcast is really to tear down the stereotypes that exist around uh, physician families, physician spouses. Um, there's a lot of things that go into a physician family. I think uh, recently with COVID, there's been a little more, sorry about this, there's been a little more compassion towards physician families as they've kind of quote unquote been on the front lines or we've realized that, oh, you know, physicians aren't necessarily recession proof as many of them have lost worst case scenario, their livelihood, but oftentimes salary for, for a time as they haven't been able to see patients. But, but long before COVID, there have been issues surrounding physician families, the stress they go under um, probably not much of a secret that suicide rates are are fairly high among physicians. But what what I didn't even know, and I only discovered this as I kind of hit a low point in my own mental health and my own journey with medicine as a spouse. I guess I should back up and introduce myself that I am married to, my goodness, that I am married to a trauma surgeon. Mm -hmm. So that was a very long road. We met, I'm a couple years older than my spouse and we met when he was still in undergrad. So we went through the entire process together and my husband actually changed specialties during residency. So, uh, we spent a good chunk of our time. Uh, we've been married 17 years and he's been in training 13 to 14 of those 17 years. Wow. So, but, but let, let me yeah. jump in. You've been married for that amount of time. Um, you have a relatively happy marriage and an open marriage uh, and a marriage which you're prepared to open up for the wider general public, you know, because if I'm hearing you, what you're saying is that there are unique stresses put on the spouse of a doctor. Sure. And you've lived that experience, probably still living it, but you want to expose that. Um, because it's been a little bit of a secret uh, to people. How does your spouse feel about you opening up, uh, you know, the inner dynamics of, of your marriage to the world? Well, I'm very fortunate in that he's been supportive of me uh, doing the show. We have definitely had to have conversations. I'm like, hey, Josh, I think I want to talk about finances. Um, I'm considering sharing this story. Um, how do you feel about that? Um, or we're going to talk about sex and I wanted to bring up, you know, a certain thing is, is that, you know, crossing a line. So I think it's incumbent upon me as, you know, a marriage partner to discuss those more intimate things with my husband before I just go live or, or go do a well, show, but without, he's, he's been very going, supportive. Without going into specifics and details, what areas has Josh thought, Lara, no, you know, we, you can't talk about this. <laughs> um, to be honest with you, he's never told me no. He's never told me no. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he, he may in the future, you know, ask me not to go somewhere with the podcast. Um, we do, you know, we do protect his privacy somewhat in that, you know, we're not going to talk about his patients. Of course, we're not going to break HIPAA regulations. Uh, the show is really not about him. It's a, it's about me. It's about the physician spouse. And we're the ones that, that need the space. I think physicians, of course, need more support. Of course they do. 
But kind of back to one of my earlier points, people don't realize that physician spouses, particularly cisgender women married to male physicians, are at twice the suicide rate of, of other women. So something's going on there. It's like, mm -hmm. if we hit the jackpot in marrying a doctor, what? why are we miserable? This is supposed to be what, you know, makes us happy. And it has a lot to do with losing our own identity in supporting them and, and having all the complications that come along with anyone in a high demanding job. Because certainly, you know, physicians aren't the only ones working hard in this world, but anyone in a high demanding career. Uh, and, and if you, tr if you're a career woman or have aspirations to be, and you're married to a physician, you soon learn that they're on, they're on a train, if you will. And that train can't really stop. They have certain tests they're going to be taking at certain times. They have certain uh, moves they may have to make depending on um, the way the U.S. does the match system for graduating medical students as they go to residency. So physician spouses often give up careers, um, having children factors into it a lot as it does for a lot of families. You know, what does the household labor division look like? How do we make this all work? Um, and it can come to a point where physician spouses often just really feel like the shadow spouse. And that's not a good place to be. You know, no one wants to feel like they're the appendage uh, to their spouse. They want to be a 100% participating member of that team. And so what we try to do is talk about, you know, the ways in which we need to support the spouse, because of course we want them to be successful as much as anyone, but also how we can support ourselves. You know, how can we keep our own interests alive? How can we keep our own voices? Like, how can we feel like we're a contributing part of this rather than just the, the one that made it possible for them to get the glory, if you will, right? Um, because because you can work really hard and help your spouse get through med school and residency. And the truth is, at the end of the day, it's their credentials, not yours. Um, but but you, you know, you kind of gave them the family, you gave them the home, you you made their life a little bit easier because they had you. Um, but but it's complicated, right? Because it does benefit you as the spouse, obviously. But if your relationship is on the rocks, it's, you know, it's difficult. Mm. Uh, you, you beautifully outlined the position of a physician spouse. And um, I stand a little bit humbled because I'm kind of like everybody else. I just thought you guys had hit, hit the jackpot. Okay, so, um, but I think you, you can really see the, the way that you explained it, that yeah, they're, their career isn't a career it's a, a vocation and that vocation is all encompassing within the marriage where they go the hours that they work uh, invariably they bring home the stresses of that sure. as well you know they've had they're worrying about a patient they've got a tricky surgery to do tomorrow they've just done one and it didn't quite go right how I, you know yeah. This isn't something which they can just, when they walk in, just say, honey, I'm home, and uh, it's just forgotten about. Right. And and two more points I would say on that. You know, number one, the debt. So you get, you kind of get so far into the medical training process, there's no turning back, because at a certain point, you're like, well, if I don't finish and actually start making six figures a year, we'll, we'll never get out of debt, because our debt is also six figures, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also the idea of just, uh, how can I best put this? But like, um, as you mentioned, like that, you, that stress never goes away, right? So you can never compete with, like I share a story on my show about the kids were sick. Uh, this was during residency. I was, I was sick of sick kids, right? And uh, my husband had done some dumb like 80 hour shift or something. He comes home, he's exhausted. I've got a vomiting child. Of course, he's worked 80 hours a week. He's given everything to the hospital and the patients. And even with a vomiting child, I feel like how can I compete with the fact like 
your patient was like on a deathbed or something, you know, our kid just has the stomach bug. So mm -hmm. it becomes very difficult sometimes to feel like uh, your needs, even your valid needs have a place. Cause it's like, Oh, well, never mind. He's he'll be fine where your patient may not be, right? So it's it's difficult. And I that particular night I actually uh left the house and Josh was like, Well, where are you going? I'm like, anywhere, Walgreens to get crackers and soda. Like, let me be <laughs> like, and of course, you know, you feel bad because they're so exhausted, but at some point you're like, they've got to have a father too. Like you give the bath, you know, he just threw up again. You give the bath do, this time. I don't care how tired you are. I'm do, gonna <laughs> Do you sometimes think, you know what, I should have married a plumber? <laughs> it's like funny you say that because my brother-in-law is a plumber. And uh -huh. yes, I have considered uh that marriage, but of course that comes with with another set of issues, you know, because they're small business owners, which is also very taxing. But but yeah, it, it's definitely a joke that life might have been easier. One thing that helps with that, though, is I have learned, I didn't always know this, mm -hmm. but I have now learned that my husband is doing exactly what he was meant to do in life. So there was a time in life when I questioned, why are you choosing medicine, right? Um, and I think a lot of people go through this because physicians, you know, they have to have a certain amount of intelligence, obviously. They're, they're very capable people. Um, they have more than one talent or skill. So it's like, you could have gone into finance. You could have gone into higher ed. You could have, he's a math and science major. I'm sure he could have found something to do. Like why medicine? Um, and it, it's kind of a long story. I won't give all the details, but, but through time, I have really come to have my own like witness for lack of a better word that he's doing exactly what he should be doing. And that has made so much peace in my life because instead of questioning it every time things get a little hard, I just like take a deep breath and know, well, this kind of sucks, but at least I'm no longer fighting that battle in my head of should he or should he not have chosen to do surgery? Um, that's exactly where he's supposed to be. I, I don't think everyone on the planet is cut out to be a surgeon. And I'm thankful that there are people out there that have those talents and skills and are willing, you know, to be there when, you know, when you need a, a good surgeon, you're glad one's there, right? So. How much of married to doctors is, I am a cisgendered woman married to a cisgendered man? How much of this is that, traditional gender role in marriage? Ah, so I'm glad you asked this. So fair question. I, a my audience, a lot of it. And I think that comes from the fact that that's who I am. So I naturally attract people like me. I have had uh, some diversity on my show. I would like to have more. Um, if you go into my Instagram account, you can see recently um, some of the diversity that I've been trying to feature there. And I was thankful that I didn't have to scramble for it. It already existed in my show. Um, but yeah, as a cisgender woman speaking from this perspective, that does tend to be who resonates most with my message. Um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Uh, we do have a lot of men, though, surprisingly. You know, 50% of physicians are now women in the U.S. Mm -hmm. anyway. And it's always been important for me to include that perspective as well. So I am happy to say that my community does have, you know, lots of men who are also dealing with, with these same challenges and, and perhaps even other trickier things that women don't deal with, like being the awkward dad at the play date when everyone else was female, you know? Um, so we, we so enjoy that too. Obviously you're going to be um, an addition to Intelligent Speech 2020, uh, which is happening on June 27th. Um, what will you be presenting and why, Lara? Well, 
I'm not sure yet. I'm hoping you and Drew will give me some indication. <laughs> but I'm sure that I will be probably speaking about something along the lines of finding your own voice and the reason why that's important, how to kind of get out from behind the shadows, like advocating for yourself a little bit in relationships. I do a lot of relationship coaching, so I'm certainly open to talking about that, talking more about my journey. Um, so those are some of the things that Drew and I were kind of bouncing around. And I, I'm certainly open to uh, to hear your suggestions as well and the direction that that you would like to take it for your audience. I'm excited to be part of part of your group and the Intelligent Speech Conference. I think it's going to be a wonderful event. Thank you. Now, you have to remind everybody exactly where uh, they can find your podcast. Sure. So I'm on all the major podcast platforms, wherever you like to listen. Um, you can also find me on my website. Pretty easy. It's just married to doctors.com. Yeah. Now, very last question, you know, after all the travails you've been through in your marriage to, to Josh, would you ever recommend that somebody marries a doctor? Whoo. Um, that's an no. answer in itself. We could end right there. Let's end right there. It's complicated. Laura, Laura thank you for uh, agreeing to come on to Intelligent Speech. Thank you for uh, putting yourself through the ringer, so to speak, and doing this live pre-chat with us. And I look forward to uh, you gracing everybody's screens in, what, about 10 days' time? Yeah, I'm excited as well. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on.